Hi, I'm Kimmy Sparkle, the internet's only Pegasus Star reviewer. First of all, I'm sorry this review took so long. I had a big school project due on Wednesday about the Parcheron prophecy, and since it's still so mysterious, I had a really hard time finding sources. Anyhow, given my review of the last Daring Do episode, it should come as no surprise that I found a lot of symbolism in this app. So, let's dive right into Daring Daunt. It starts out with Rainbow Dash fangirling over the impending release of a new Daring Do book. Her friends play the part of onlookers who just don't get it, as Rainbow Dash squeezes, speculates, and runs into public places shouting catchphrases that are funny to her. After a scene at a party, the party Dash, Dash, Rainbow Dash reads a paper. Rainbow Dash reads a bunch of passages from the books aloud to her friends so that they can start liking the series too. She has the great idea to go to A.K. Yearling's house and help her finish the book faster. Providing the hater straw man argument, Twilight says, but shouldn't we just leave her to write the books without our influence? Because it was the way she wrote those books that we fell in love with in the first place? Can't we appreciate the earnest effort she put into her stories for creativity's sake instead of encouraging her to cynically play into our own misguided desires? The ponies all go to A.K. Yearling's house. Now, you may be wondering how this works in terms of the fandom metaphor I detailed in my review of Read It and Weep. Well, think about it. Daring Do's author is named A.K. Yearling. This might go over some kids' heads, but bronies will realize that if they take the phrase A.K. Yearling is factual human and switch the letters around, they get the words Hail Lauren Faust Magic Yank, revealing that Yearling is actually a stand-in for Friendship is Magic's creator, Lauren Faust, who is an American. The similarities don't stop there. Both Lauren Faust and A.K. Yearling are female. Both are mysterious hermits who live in the woods. Both are constantly in battle with men of Latin descent. A.K. Yearling wrote herself into the Daring Do books as Daring Do, and Lauren Faust wrote herself into MLP as Daring Do. Aside from just Lauren, there are many nods within the episode to the fandom itself. For example, Twilight finds A.K. Yearling's address on fan blog Daring Daily, much like the Brony fan site which publicizes the home addresses of all show staff. There is a scene where Twilight and Rainbow get in a debate about canon. And, at the end, when creator and fans come together in one place, the temple collapses in a big earthquake as a nod to the Khan Center disaster at BabsCon 2014. This episode really reads like a love letter to Bronies and Pegasisters, as it illustrates Lauren's inner struggle and growth as she learned to appreciate her fans. At first, she thinks Rainbow Dash is creepy and getting in the way. Daring's sheltered life means that she doesn't understand what to expect from fans, so at first she gets mad when Kimmy does normal fan things like gush over her works, follow her from behind some bushes, or touch her. In the end, though, she learns that bronies make her better, and without them, she couldn't exist. She hugs Dash, thanks her for her help, and even puts shoutouts to Rainbow Dash in her new book. So, I would like to give this episode six stars, because bronies and Pegasusters get a lot of flack sometimes. But now, thanks to the message of this show, everybody who watches MLP in the whole world will know how great the fans really are. By the way, before I go, I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for helping me look so sexy. And give a shout out to my friend Rainbow Amber for her response to my wish list video. Until next time, I'm Kimmy Sparkle, the internet's only Pegasus Star Viewer, and I hope you're really sparkles!